about joint anatomy in general. We talked about that the, one of the jobs of the hyaline cartilage is to distribute the weight coming into it. And, and if the, in that hyaline cartilage, if it helps distribute the weight, and if the weight is well distributed, it can absorb a certain amount of weight, it can resist it and not be damaged by it. But if a lot of weight comes into just one spot, then that hyaline cartilage can wear and tear and be damaged. So the meniscus are not exactly the same structure as hyaline cartilage, but they do end up bearing something like a third of the weight that goes through the knee ends up being transferred through the meniscus. And the fibers of the meniscus are organized following the line of the crescent of it. So the, the collagen fibers inside of the meniscus, the fibers are running this way around. And at the outer edge, where the meniscus is close to the edge of the bone, it's more in contact or closer to the joint capsule, it's also got a better blood supply. In the middle, where the wedge gets the thinnest, where it's deepest inside the synovial joint, it doesn't have a very rich blood supply. It doesn't have a blood supply at all. It has to be nourished by the synovial fluid and whatever can travel through the cartilage. So one of the things they say is that meniscus tears won't heal, which I, uh, it, depends a, it depends on the tear. But meniscus tissue can heal if it's damaged. The thing is, and it's true of anything, if a tendon, if a ligament, if a bone, these are all connective tissue things, right? If they're damaged, and actually, yeah, if they're torn in such a way that the two ends are free of each other, then they'll heal, but they'll heal over. So it won't knit back together if the two ends are not in contact. If a bone breaks, the two ends will heal over and they won't knit back together. Um, if, however, the, t the ends of the, the torn ends or the damaged ends are in proximity, then they'll grow back together, right? So bones heal, tendons, ligaments. If it's not a full tear, it'll heal. Cartilage will do the same thing. If it's torn and separated, it'll heal over. It'll heal the tear. It just won't knit back together. So in the meniscus, the same thing happens. So if there's a if there's a tear like this, say, in the meniscus, because for some reason there's a huge amount of load in that part of the meniscus, the pressure into it then is going to make the edges of it separate. And you'll get something that right, it gets pushed apart and pushed apart and pushed apart. And chances are, unless you really change the movement pattern, it'll either keep tearing or best case scenario, it'll just heal, but it'll be like that. Right? So getting the edges of the meniscus to come back together and knit back together is a real challenge because of what we do and the, the amount of load that goes through it. Um, the other kind of tear that happens, there's a, several kinds of tear. That's one. There's another one that's called a bucket handle tear, which is where um, which is interesting because it doesn't tear across the fibers, but it tears along, along the line of the fibers, which would be, again, if there's some kind of weight coming in and it's not distributed through the wedge, but ends up separating one part from another. And it's called a bucket handle because it ends up being this little separate piece, like a handle that you could carry. Now it might not, those kinds of tears might happen all the time and we might not know about them except for the ones that get bad enough that either it tears off, it tears through and you end up with this little piece, this little piece that flips up and like the knee locks up, it gets caught in these particular ways because you've got this bit of meniscus that's no longer helping, it might actually be getting totally in the way. And they might go in then and just snip that off, snip, and clean it out and take it away. And then you just have less meniscus. 
which m might heal, might replace itself, and it might just heal like that. And we might be just fine. Or it might have a little more mobility, but you might be able to compensate for that um, less, that decreased amount of congruence in the joint by stabilizing more from your muscles or something. So there's a lot of ways that we can compensate for that. And there's a lot of stuff that happens in the knee with the meniscus, with cruciate ligament tears, which we're going to talk about in a minute, that people function just fine with no cruciate ligament or with the meniscus being damaged. And then for some people, it ends up destabilizing the knee enough that there's wear and tear on the cartilage and then stress on the bone. And then we get these bone growths and we get arthritis and da da da. At which point, I haven't heard yet yeah, that they figured out how to replace a meniscus without doing a total knee replacement. I don't think there's any structure that they can go in and just replace the meniscus. They'll clean it up, like snip away ragged bits, and they'll try to pull out any stuff that's floating around. If it gets bad enough, what they'll do is a total knee replacement, in which case they take off the top and the bottom, top of the tibia, bottom of the femur, and replace the whole thing. Mm -hmm.